Okay, it's Thursday and it's time again for Bible study, amen? And the purpose of our Bible study as usual is to study the Word of God and to be encouraged by the Word of God. And I'm reading and studying from the New Living Translation and thank you for being here on today. Make sure you have your pencil and your paper to take down the scriptures and make some notes. So today we're talking about changing, changing, amen? Because when we become saved, Jesus Christ comes into our life and we change. We shouldn't be the same that we were yesterday or the year before. Every day with Jesus, there's this old song that says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Because what we're doing, brothers and sisters, is changing to be more like Christ. So our first scripture that we're taking a look at today, um, and of course, just know that God did not say that we would that He would take us out of the fire. What He said is that He would be with us in the fire. So as we go through life and we go through situations and we have things happening to us, we will always have some scenario. That will happen. Now your response should change than when you were younger. Because you know, b- back in the day, something happens, you would like take off the earrings, put on the Vaseline, take off the shoes, and you, you get ready to get with it. Now that you're getting more in Christ and you're becoming more mature in Christ, that would not be the way you would respond, right? Because we are changing, right? So as we go through different dramas, headaches, debts, divorces, disasters, illnesses, this pandemic, layoffs, foreclosures, and the loss of a loved one, the loss of a pet, we have a lot of things that stress us out and make us act either the godly way or an ungodly way. So we need to look at how we are changing. Amen. So my girlfriend had a plant um, in her garden that really inspired this Bible study because it was one little pear and it hung in the entire season. It never dropped. It never changed color. And she, she thought the tree was dead. But what it was doing, it was changing. So let's go to Romans 8.37. And uh, we're going to go to 39. And it says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. That's why we know we're changing. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries for tomorrow, not even the powers of all hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So our responsibility is to be more like Christ. Allow him to change us, right? And doesn't matter what happens, as I mentioned, all these other things that happens to us in life, that we need to continue to change. John 3, 16, let us know, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because we are changing. He came, he grew up, he matured, he went to the cross, he died and transitioned, which is a change, back to heaven, right? And seated at the right hand of God for you and for me. He changed. We should be changing. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds 
anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Changing, right? So when we look at others and as and things that happen, we think about what Christ did for us. And we think about things that's happening right now in the world. There's so much things that's going on. So many things I should say that's going on. Um, I mean, you can, you name it. You and I can sit here and have a conversation about all the different things that's going on. The world is changing. But we know that God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. As it says in the book of Hebrews. We know our responsibility is to change, but not to be like the world, but to be like Christ. And if you see that your mindset, things that you're doing and saying, is looking more like the world than like Christ, then you need to do a self-examination, do a checkup from the neck up, and make sure that what you're doing is more like God and the Word of God and not like the world. Amen? Being a Christian should have proof. They should see fruit like that tree I was talking about earlier. Our Christian life should produce fruit and we should be looking more like God every day. And so the fruit to our change, amen? So we need to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to have the fruit to change, to be more like Christ. So in John 14, 1 to 6, it says, Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't know, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So we know that the change that we are asking God for comes through Christ because we seek him. He lives inside of us and he gives us what we need to change. Now, if there was a case against you to say that you are Christian, would you be found guilty and would you be condemned? Is there enough evidence to prove that you are saved? Is there enough evidence to prove that you have changed? And if not, why not? We need to demonstrate the love of God. You know, be a help to others, be a witness to the lost, and to grow our faith and be steadfast. Psalms 118, 14 to 16 says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. The strong right arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. So he has done glorious things. We, because we belong to God and belong to everything that is good and righteous, also has done glorious things. But we need to recognize that we have to do what thus saith the Lord. Are we changing? Are we reading our word? Are we meditating on the word? Are we allowing the word of God to make us to look more like Christ? 2 Timothy 1, 7-9 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm a prisoner for him. And this is what this is what um, Paul was telling to Timothy. And he said, what the strength of God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. And we know the good news is the gospel, right? That Jesus Christ is Lord. And we should always be telling someone about the good news. We see in John 14, 27, he's, you know, the word is clear. 
uh, you know, Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. We can try to be like the world, but we can't get peace from the world. We can only get peace from God. Because once you realize that God's got everything already in the palm of his hand, including you, and that everything is worked out for your good, once you start trusting that, then you will have peace. If you think you have to do it, then you won't have peace. If you believe and trust God and know that he's working it out for your good, then you will have peace. So it all depends on what you're doing as you change. Are you growing? And changing to look like Christ. We see in 1 Corinthians. Um, chapter 16 verse 13. Be on guard. And I want you guys to make this note. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and be strong. I'm going to read it again. That is so good. As we change. 1 Corinthians 16 13. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. We are changing, saints. We are looking more like Christ every day. And we need to stay the course. We are not worried about who does what. We don't care what the Kardashians be doing. We don't care what uh, Kanye be doing or Ray Ray or whoever. Or whoever the latest person is that everybody else is talking about. All we talk about is Jesus. All we want to do is Jesus. All we want to learn about is Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. And verse 6 says, Seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. The path that you are taking is moving you towards Christ. You are changing. You are looking more and more like Christ. Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Our purpose is to look more like God and to make sure that we're walking the path that he has called us to. 2 Corinthians 4.16-18 says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small. Come on, somebody. You know, it seems like all the stuff that we go through is a big deal. Okay? But here is what he says. He says it's small and won't last very long. If you look back over stuff that was annoying to you or it made you upset, you see, it looked like it was a long time. But it's a short time. It says it, it, it says it's small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. Come on, somebody. That's heaven. And for the things we see now, we will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. God is forever, saints. Our life with him in heaven is forever. Our belief that we are chosen should be forever. We will get a glorified body. One that doesn't feel pain. One that doesn't need a walker or oxygen any longer. One that doesn't need to take any medication. We need to recognize who we are. We will be living with him forever. So we need to continue to change to be more like Christ. Amen. And that is what we need to do every day with Jesus. It should be sweet on the day before. And as we look at how... We are today. Are we different than we were yesterday? Are we different than we were last year? Is our temper the same? Our reaction to things the same? And if it is, then we're not changing. We're not molding. We're not growing. We're not looking more like Christ. And we need to do, as I said before, self-examination, a checkup from the neck up, and recognize that we need to change. We need to allow God to mold us to be 
more and more like Christ. And with that, we're going to go ahead to our prayer list. Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni Owens, Shatterford family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra Graves, Georgette, Norma Reed, Andrew Walker, Jillian and family, Elijah Echo, Don Cosby, Lee McGee, Maria Rice, Patrick Hilton, Deacon Isabel Roberts, we have two James, Lorraine Rogers, Beverly Davis, Grace Appleby, Michael Moore, Mario French, Romario French, Pastor Teal, Leonie Walker, Tracy Sisko, Lee Mullins, Marlene, Franklin Brown, Donna, Jean Goldsby, Wright, family, Karen, Charles, Elvis, CJ Nash III, Ashley and family, Francisco, Harris, family, and Regina, and Philbert, Linda McCall, Lucinda Downer, Paulette Redward, Doral Anderson, Indy Grant, Grant family, Lloyd Chatterford, Moore family, Michael, Yvonne, Denise, Malcolm, Ed, Harry, Key Thomas, Abadias, JD, um, and we're praying for JD specifically. He's having surgery on the 29th, and we're praying that God will bless him. TJ, James Rock, and Geraldine Rock, Nigeria, and Israel. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, dear Lord, for your word. We love you, Lord God, and praise you. Thank you for how you've watched over us as we slept last night. Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity, for being in your room one more time, in your inner sanctuary. And we thank you for allowing us to just come and just to pray and to just receive a blessing from you. Lord God, you heard all these names that I lifted up to you for prayer. You know what each person needs, Lord God, and I lay them at your feet. I thank you ahead of time for what you're doing. I pray for this country, Lord God. I pray for everyone in it. I pray for every concern, every illness, every disease. Lord God, everyone grieving, everyone that's hurt. I pray for emo emotional upheavals, Lord God. I pray for jobs, Lord God. I pray for all things that your children need to function and to spread the gospel and to tell this dying world that Jesus Christ is Lord and that you're coming back. Father God, I thank you ahead of time for all things. I bless you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. I bind anything the enemy tries to do, Father God, and I speak life and liberty in all of your children. I thank you, God, for your love for us, and I praise you in Jesus' holy and matchless name I pray. And I thank you, Father God, for your people that's been on the study on today. Change them, Lord God. Let them feel the change and see the change. In Jesus' matchless name I pray, and we say amen, amen, amen. Bless you. Thank you for being on today. See you next week. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.